Today I'm going to do an 8 by 8 inch oil painting and it's going to be a cafe at dusk in San Francisco. So let's get started. Okay, so as usual I am mapping it out with burnt sienna which I've just thinned with a bit of odorless mineral spirits. And I'm just striking some lines here trying to, as I say, map out where the big shapes are going to be. No detail. And I am going to eliminate the car the traffic light, the flag, the person walking across the crosswalk. I'm just going to keep this really simple because this is a small panel. It's only 8x8 eight eight, and it's already complicated enough so I'm going to keep it simple. Uh, so now I'm going to work from dark to light and that's just a mixture of alizarin crimson and ultramarine blue mapping it out the darks because uh, I want to establish a feeling of light as soon as possible. Um, Alright so putting in the sky and then um, some of the other darks, like I said, looking at the darkest areas, uh, which appears to be that area over to the right. And I'm going to still darken that even further. But now putting in some warm tones so I can uh, get that feeling of light happening as soon as possible. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to key the painting to those warm tones that I put in there. In other words, that's my light source. The light, the light in the painting is what attracted me to this scene. I love dusk scenes, you know, where you've got still some light in the sky, but the incandescent lights of the buildings are coming on. So I really want a convincing feeling of light in this painting. So um, by putting in those warm tones, then I can adjust the values around it to make sure that that light uh, reads as real light. So I'm getting a strong lighting effect. Uh, okay, what else here? So yeah, I just uh, there I just lightened the sky um, by at the horizon, which I do typically. Like I grade my skies from dark to light, starting from top to bottom, even if I don't see it in the image that I'm working from. Um, I try to do that. If the if the sky doesn't have that gradation to it, they just tend to look flat. So um, having the 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 color you know get lighter as it goes to the horizon, I think really works. Um, what else? Okay, yeah, so reinforcing some of the darks off to the right and then establishing that bit of light on the side of the building. Um, also notice that the angle, I've kind of, although it's hard to see from, because the uh, panel is kind of viewed at an angle, uh, but I do think I've kind of reduced, have I, the reduced the angle of the hill, maybe a little bit. Um, but anyway, one other thing I want to say is in a painting like this, there's a lot of adjusting going on. I'm constantly, like I map it out quickly and, you know, because I want my drawing to feel spontaneous. I don't want to get a ruler out or do any of that. I'd rather just come back and keep making repairs or keep fixing it in until, until it's right. Um, that enables me to keep a loose feel to the painting and um, and yet still have a strong drawing underneath as like a strong foundation. If I come in with a ruler or something like that, which I've tried in the past, then I'm just too careful throughout the whole process and I won't get the energy and the brushwork that I'm after. So my approach is just to sketch it out as best I can and then I'll fix things as I go along. But I'm keeping you know that feel of looseness and working quickly, keeping spontaneity, in the brushwork, um, which is what's important to me. So, you know, it's that balance between structure and um, and chaos. Structure and like keeping it loose. All right. So yeah, now just adjusting the windows a bit, and uh, I think I'm going to get out my square here pretty soon. Um, yeah, there we go. So now at this point, I'm going to come in and start using the this square um, and straight edge here to just kind of strengthen some of the lines. Um, because this is architecture, you know, I like it to have a very strong structural feel. And but I don't want to overdo it. You know, I don't want to I don't want to use the straight edge so much that it, it that it you know becomes too organized and too controlled. Um, so a little bit of control goes a long way. Uh, but it's a really handy it's a really handy tool to have that you know to have the box that I made and the um, and that square 
because uh, it does allow me to get a few really strong horizontals and verticals, which really um, anchors the thing and makes it feel like architecture, you know? Uh, so let's see what else. Yeah, I think with the details in the, in the sidewalk and also the angle of the sidewalk as it disappears off into the distance, uh, it looks like I got that wrong. I, I'm going to have to repair that, you know, which I, I, I remember I do repair it at some point. I think, yeah, right now I'm kind of going at it. But uh, yeah, see that little pop of light there, that would be impossible to do without a straight edge. Just And yet it adds so much, that little spot of light on the sill there or whatever at the base of that window. All right, so there I've kind of fixed the sidewalk as it goes off into the distance. Also, notice how the crosswalk, I and because the panel's so small, there's no way I was going to add all of those lines. It just would be too fussy, and it would draw too much attention to the foreground. I'd rather just have those simple crosswalk lines that, that lead the eye in, and it's not all this energy and clutter at the, at the, you know, the base of the painting. Rarely do I paint you know, a scene exactly as it appears in a photograph or as I see it in real life. I'm making choices. I spent some more time. I kind of lightened up the top half of the building here. And I put, as you can see, I, I put some red tones in here using alizarin crimson just to get a little variety because it was mostly blue. And then I put these lights in the window. These are reflections from other street lights. Uh, and then also, Put some of this blue um, on the glass here. This is reflecting the sky uh, so that it makes it feel like glass. So it's not just this like dark void there. And then put some really strong bits of light in over those warm areas, kind of reinforcing where the light sources are. I darkened the street because I really wanted to bring attention to this area here. And in, in, you know, in the image, the value of the street was much lighter. And I felt like it was, it was kind of, you know, by making it darker, it really accentuated the light, this area here. So I darkened the street. All right, this is a kind of composition that I like to do on a larger panel, 12 by 12 inch or larger, just because there is so much going on. So this one took, I think, two hours or more. Um, which is about what a 12 by 12 would take. I'll post a video about my, the colors I use, like what my palette was, and you know, kind of talk about that little box that I use. I'm gonna talk about that. I'll do a little video on my Patreon channel, so if you're interested in seeing that, there's a link down below. And I make all my, all my videos on the Patreon channel are open to all levels of support. Seems like most people just like to pitch in to help me keep this channel going, so um, I've just made all of those available. So anyway, if you want to check it out, like I said, link down below. Thanks for hanging out, guys. Hope you are healthy, safe, and staying creative. I will see you in the next video.